we must first recognize that the production and trade in weapons is largely an legal enterprise. The problem becomes when these weapons are diverted into the illicit markets. So based on uh, the flagship project of Silence in the Guns pursuant to Agenda 2063, the Peace and Security Council developed a roadmap for Silence in the Guns in Africa. So uh, while the roadmap uh, recognizes that the drivers uh, of uh, crime and of terrorism and conflict in Africa have varied, the use of small arms has been a common characteristic amongst all of them. Another common characteristic and casualty is that of Africa's development. Conflicts escalate, fueled by the availability of weaponry, and undermine our quest for peace and security. The biggest challenge we have in the continent it's really uh, peace and security. Silence in the guns, it's not only the responsibility of Africa in Commission, it is also the responsibility of each and every country in our continent. It is also a, a strong signal outside the continent. Those who are still pouring more armaments in this, in this continent and trying to militarize it. Hopefully, get the understanding of everybody that enough is enough when uh, it comes to uh, bringing more armaments in the continent. The African leaders have come to realize that very little of their ambitious project for Africa could be actually accomplished if they don't succeed in silencing the guns. All these conflicts between Somalia and South Sudan. Uh, in Libya, in the Central African Republic, they reflect uh, deficiencies in uh, governance. They reflect the problem which we have in Africa of uh, uh, managing diversity. If we can address these factors and find durable solutions, we'll be able to go on a steady path towards silencing the guns. For the African Union, Silencing the Guns is more than a slogan. It is an urgent priority articulated in Agenda 2063 and aims to curtail violent conflicts and end wars on the continent by the year 2020. At its core is the aspiration for a peaceful and more secure Africa. The overriding outcome is the Africa we want, one of unity, peace and prosperity. Agenda 2063 uh, is about transforming Africa. It's the transformation of the continent. But for that to happen, we need to make sure that women are at the center of that transformation. And that's why the African Union, and in particular the leadership of the Commission, is making sure that women uh, participated in the whole uh, process in the AUC itself, but all the organs of the AC. So for me, silencing the gun is peace building as an entire process, where we talk about prevention, where we talk about uh, making sure that uh, we resolve our conflict in a way that we sit around the table and negotiate, but also that we build the peace making sure that it is inclusive. For us to, to silence the gun, we have to start at the local level. So we need to invest more at the family level to talk of peace in the families, then it transpired at the community level, then at national level, then obviously at the continental level, and global peace will be then built for that. Well, first of all, I believe that uh, as far as interstate conflicts are concerned, there is very little left of it in Africa. What is left now in Africa is the kind of uh, domestic conflict with evolving nature. And next to it, you will find terrorists also taking advantage of the lack of security, lack of stability to, to create a space for them so that they can hit the stability within and also stability of neighboring countries. The African Union Peace and Security Architecture Framework and Roadmap is one of the most significant mechanisms for achieving peace and stability on the continent. 
with one of the core components being that of the Peace and Security Council. The main component of this APSA is the Peace and Security Council. I think this is now one of the most respected organ that we have. We do have two annual meetings with the Security Council of UN. We even undertake joint visits on the ground. Usually, the, uh, our decisions here, the decision of the Peace and Security, are the basis for the Security Council decisions in New York. And as you know, uh, an agreement was signed in last April between our chairperson and the SG of UN in, in having a framework for working better uh, in terms of peace and security, which has been even completed by another agreement in terms of development to promote our agenda 2063 and UN agenda on 2030. As well as a dialogue-centered approach for member states, the ability to mobilize continent-wide peace and support operations via the African Standby Force is a critical tool available to the Peace and Security Council within the African Peace and Security Architecture. The African Standby Force is one of the tools in the toolbox that the Peace and Security Council has in trying to resolve conflict. But we need to understand that it is not the first tool that gets taken out. In terms of the African Peace and Security Architecture, it is actually the second or the third one. Ideally, according to the upside, is issues of negotiations and mediation, which is the pre-conflict um, issues that uh, um, need to take place when people are negotiate. And if those do not deliver and the situation goes into conflict, the idea then is that the African Standby Force needs to be called in to contain the conflict from spreading. Dividends are also being reaped on the ground with these operations, with enhanced efforts towards tackling social inequalities and the notable inclusion of women in major peacekeeping roles. When you come to look at why are people carrying the guns, what are they fighting, you will find that the reasons are social. It is either marginalization, it is either underdevelopment of their areas, uh, social inequalities. So when you look at, into the root causes of the conflicts, it's all social. Silencing the gun as a flagship project, uh, as part of the Agenda 263, is under the Department of Peace and Security. So we are working uh, together with the Department of Peace and Security, which is leading this very important project. And we are addressing the social causes and the social impact of conflicts in Africa. And we are trying to address it from cultural uh, perspectives. We are trying to liaise the ground and to base the ground uh, for more reconciliations, more stability, more uh, peace building. It's all related and we are trying to address all these problems from a multi-sector approach. When I go to uh, Somalia and see the women of Somalia, but who are still resilient and are part of the police in the community, they are part of the armies, they are reconstructing Somalia. And let me tell you that if the African Union were not in Somalia, I don't think that we will see the Somalia that is today. In Somalia, the reason why the number of uh, uh, sex and gender-based violence is low is because of the presence of women in peacekeeping missions. And if we then imagine to say that women should play a role at all levels, from the family until at the global level, we will see lasting or sustainable peace in this world. I think there is an aspect of citizen participation in silencing the gun in this initiative that we often overlook. It's um, what I call the necessary mindset uh, to be able to emphasize the role of social values in strengthening national cohesion. 
which is in the long run will then allow more stability in African countries, but also more social cohesion and people getting together and understanding uh, what a nation building process means in terms of the, those social values that are societal values. In addition to boots on the ground, diplomatic efforts by the African Union Commission are aimed at prevention and post-conflict initiatives after the signing of peace agreements. I believe that the area in which the uh, African added value can make a difference is prevention. For one armed conflict that actually takes place, we succeed to prevent a number of armed conflicts from happening. We have not only the tools, but also we have the culture, the culture of mediation. So in every part of Africa, there, are, there is a variety of tools that can be used from the role that wise people can play at a local level to that of the uh, institutions within any given country and also the regional economic communities and the continental level. We get information from all corners of, the, of our continent and our sources include not only um, our regional uh, economic communities or regional mechanisms, but also civil society, the private sector, uh, human rights organizations, and so on and so forth. So um, we have um, a wide array of sources uh, which provides us information. We have been successful at predicting uh, potential conflicts. There's not a single conflict that we had not predicted in the past, like uh, the Central African Republic where also we saw it coming, uh, and there we deployed a force, uh, MISCA, which paved the way for the UN mission in the Central African Republic. So people tend to look at things that have not worked, but there is a lot of things that we're doing that worked. But ultimately though, uh, us as a continental organization, we have a mandate to respond to conflicts or prevent them, but it is the responsibility of the member states themselves to uh, handle the conflicts ultimately. Disarmament, so demobilization and reintegration uh, is another important component in the silence in the guns roadmap. Uh, and the objective really is to ensure that in the phase following the signing of peace agreements and the peaceful resolution of conflicts, that there will be a sustainable uh, disarmament programs to ensure that combatants do not again uh, regress into violence and to put in place the conditions required for sustainable peace. This is an evolution, a positive evolution in the continent, though Silencing the guns means also focusing on those underlying causes and making sure that prevention will prevail and will not have to be obliged to resort to weapons as the ultimate resort. If we are all giving the utmost priority to prevention, it is not only to prevent the conflict as it goes, but also preventing the relapse of situations of conflict. And there we have to, to act in, uh, in a situation of post-conflict. This is one of our main programs. We are working with many countries as we speak. We are uh, working in Somalia. We are working in Central Africa Republic. And I, I will tell you that uh, as we speak, we are promoting the African initiative to allow the signing of an agreement with the armed groups and the government. So the, the whole idea is after the signing of that agreement is those armed people will render their armament and enter in DDR to prepare them either to be uh, well prepared to assume responsibility within the, uh, the army or to be directed to other sectors of activities within the country. The African Union APSA roadmap further builds upon the efforts of the Peace and Security Council and focuses on more preventative and post-conflict strategies. All these initiatives feed critically into achieving the goal of silencing the guns, with increased collaboration in the strategic priority areas of conflict prevention, crisis management, post-conflict reconstruction, strategic security issues, and coordination and partnerships. So how realistic is the ambition of silencing the guns by 2020? And what has been the progress made thus far? Having 2020 as a deadline, yes, it is ambitious. We want to be ambitious. Uh, if we don't meet it, we will adjust. So it's good to have 
benchmarks uh, of, uh, and, and timelines in terms of what we're doing because it, it puts pressure on us and, it, and our member states to, to do better than we're doing right now. If you look at, for example, um, the, the challenges we're facing with migration, half of the migrants are coming from countries that have no conflict. But there are issues around development. We do need these targets because we need to say if we arrive at 2020, maybe we have not achieved what we wanted to achieve, it gives us the opportunity to look back and say, what is that we missed? Our principles made it clear that we cannot um, bequeath the current Africa to the next generation. So we need, as we move on, we need to have those timelines so that we can give hope to the next generation. Well, to make any real change, you really need to be bold and you need to be ambitious. Uh, this is a very important political declaration by our heads of states. And what is now will be required is to really put behind that political will and the full force of the institutions concerned. So if there is a strong enough political will, then this can be realized, or at least we can create the conditions and make the progress required for this to be uh, moved forward and to be realized in the years to come. Silencing the guns is also my responsibility, your responsibility, his responsibility. Because of the level of crisis and, and, and the, the appalling challenge, I think our heads of state had to make a date for that. If we Africans, as we, we did now in Kigali, if we are putting the, the necessary blocks in terms of really preparing the integration of the continent, preparing to harness the dividend of youth, if we are uh, really promoting the empowerment of women, if we are also really promoting the, the good governance, which is political and economic, I think that objective is not far from us. We can still have confidence in, in our pan-Africanism, in our determination, political determination, and count on each and every woman and man in this continent. I think it is doable, even if you go a little bit further, but let's work. What is important is to work for that goal. With Africa's long-term transformation at stake, silencing the guns by 2020 as part of the vision of African Union's Agenda 2063 is far more than an aspiration. It is holistic. It is a necessity, and it is the only way we can achieve the full potential of our continent and transform the lives of all our citizens and new generation to live in sustainable peace, security, and prosperity. <laughs>